The name is Emile Schrijver. I'm the curator of the Bibliotheca Rosenthaliana in Amsterdam, the, uh, one of the special collections of the University of Amsterdam. I'm also a uh, professor of Jewish book history at the uh, University of Amsterdam, and I'm a curator of a large private collection in Zurich by the name of the Burginski Collection. I was not surprised to find the quality that I found. The, uh, this is a world famous institution. As someone who's been working in the field, I knew that there was quality to expect, but it's only with the, with the original books in your hand that you realize what, you, what you're working with. And I must say that the, uh, the, the quality of the collections here and the way in which the, the institute tries to uh, showcase the, the importance of the collection and tries to stimulate researchers to work with the collection is, is quite exemplary, actually. Actually, there aren't too many institutes exactly like yours. A research institute that actually carries the name of a famous library and that has both the, the university structure that is part of the institute here as well as a, a famous library that also has a fame of its own regardless of its university status. That, that is something that is actually quite unique in the world. One of the best elements uh, of the strategy of this institute is really to bring together specialists from all kinds of disciplines. So I, I happen to work in, in Jewish books, and quite frankly, this is the only section of the collection that I really know. But I know that, that there's, there's been other initiatives in which scholars of Arabic manuscripts, of Indian materials, of other materials have worked together, have worked with the holdings of the, uh, of the institute. And I think that is the real uh, strength um, of this particular insti institute. There's, there's something like of, of a gap between uh, your traditional humanities scholars of today who are interested in digitization, who are interested in even digital humanities. There's a gap between them and the libraries that actually hold the original volumes that contain these texts. As beautiful as the internet is, can be, and often is for, for the study of old, old sources, nothing's going to be the original. And the, uh, strength of this institution lies in this very connection with the library and lies in the connection with the library that's also willing to let researchers work with the material and doesn't sit on it, so to speak, and just keep it, but, but is actually willing, under the right circumstances, to provide researchers with the facilities to work with these originals. And I think that potential is enormous. I think that if the institute can, can play a role in bringing students of Jewish studies, of classical studies, of Arabic studies, of book history, of b book history, bringing students into the library and actually have the actual experience of working with old books, get to know how they smell, they see the difference between paper and parchment, see how a scribe made a mistake and corrected the mistake, see how artists worked, worked on the originals and how, especially in earlier manuscripts, the illustrations and decorations contained in the manuscript are actually genuine work, work, works of art, get the people to work with the original works and at the same time stimulate digitization, stimuli, stimulate new kinds of research that use the digital availability of these primary sources, but never forget to look at the original book and never forget that this is book is not a screen, this book is paper bound, parchment bound, can be a scroll, Whatever it is, but, but realize that there are originals sitting here. And I think that's a very important task for this institute. To be visible, to make your materials searchable, that is one of the big challenges. So the, if the institute can, can stimulate the, uh, the, the library to digitize, if the institute can can also help the library in finding necessary funds to do so if the institute can help the library in uh, providing metadata and uh, providing the data that are necessary to present all the works uh, on the internet i think that's a very important task of the library and this is the this is the way to get the holdings the collections uh, to the scholarly world but for me i'm also i'm always an advocate of um, of dedicated websites for certain collections. So rather than hiding 
your collections uh, within the larger framework of the university library, create within that larger framework a separate platform, a separate interface where researchers can easily find the materials that they're looking for and can easily browse through the materials because now a lot of the access is, is catalog based. People look for a particular item, find in the catalog that it is being digitized, but you want to, want to, you want to do it the other way around. You want to see what is digitized and, and be surprised. There are a couple of larger projects working on the Hebrew manuscripts going on in the library. Uh, I was asked to be an advisor to these, uh, to, these, to these projects and if these will bring me back to the library I will, be, I will be most happy. With the two hats that I have on, one as a researcher and one as a curator of a library collection uh, as well, I really try to bridge the, the gap that I mentioned before between researchers on the one hand and librarians on the other hand and, and try to bring them together and I think the digitization is the answer to that. So that would probably also get me back to, uh, to Manchester. So there will be there are more than enough good, good reasons to, uh, to want to be here and I'm sure that I will find one in the near future.